Microchip, Induced Tumors in Laboratory Rodents and Dogs, a review of the literature. This article showcased a causal link between implanted radio frequency, RFID microchip transponders, and cancer. Sharing in this study was Dr. Robert Ben Ezra, the Director of Cancer Biology Genetics Program of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. He went on record to say, There's no way in the world, having read this information, that I would have one of those chips implanted in my skin or in one of my family members. Given the preliminary animal data, it looks to me that there's definitely cause for concern. Even to the average layperson, Verichip's devil's advocate position, taken with their press release supporting the microchipping legislation, sticks out like a sore thumb. It reeks of desperation, deceit, and sleight of hand as people from all corners of the globe reject the concept of human microchipping. The company has now attempted to eliminate their Achilles heel by distancing itself from mandatory human chipping. How grounded in truth is Scott Silverman's press release? Let us use semantics to testify to the press release's validity. The English Dictionary breaks down voluntary to mean done, made, brought about, undertaken, etc. of one's own accord or by free choice. Acting or done without compulsion or obligation. Done by intention and not by accident. Having the power of willing or choosing. Verichip Corp has presented itself to be the RFID implantable identification company who preserves and promotes civil liberties and free will. Fantastic news you say, but let's keep in mind the word voluntary and let's go back to the science of semantics and look up the word Alzheimer's. A progressive form of pre-senile dementia that is similar to senile dementia except that it usually starts in the 40s or 50s. First symptoms are impaired memory which is followed by impaired thought and speech, and finally, complete helplessness. The open letter question to Verichip Corp is how does an Alzheimer patient who has impaired thought and memory make a voluntary decision? The answer is self-evident. They can't. And thus the glaring obviousness is that Verichip Corp continues to embrace a smoke and mirrors campaign. By doing this, the lying stud pedigree of Verichip is maintained. On Wednesday, October the 13th, 2004, the FDA approved the Verichip RFID chip for human consumption. The radio frequency identification device contains a 16-digit patient verification number that is transmitted to a handheld radio scanner upon activation. How did Verichip get FDA approved? With the sprinkling of Tommy Magic Dust, of course. The FDA is overseen by the Department of Health and Human Services, which at the time of Verichip's approval was headed by Tommy Thompson. Two weeks after the device's approval took effect on January 10, 2005, Thompson left his cabinet post and within five months was a board member of Verichip Corp and Applied Digital Solutions. Delving deeper into Verichip's blue closet, we find IBM, who of course denies any current involvement with Verichip, but as history shows, provided Applied Digital, Verichip, the necessary line of credit to continue operations, beginning their relationship in 1999. Go ahead and cue the Twilight Zone music, as now is where it gets a bit strange. Under the forbearance agreement announced on March 27, 2003 with IBM Credit, the behemoth information company IBM renegotiated with Applied Digital Solutions, Verichip, and settled the $95 million debt for a once-off payment of $30 million, having supposedly written off the $95 million obligation in 2002. This renegotiation smacks of a covert relationship as IBM Credit could have liquidated more than 19 million Digital Angel shares to recoup its money. The smoking gun is also evident with the stock options IBM has of Verichip Corp. And the fact that Verichip Corporation's Veramed Medical Solutions is now integrated into a hospital demonstration area of the IBM Solutions Experience Lab. This closes the case that the world's largest information company is indeed involved with the human microchipping agenda. Imagine if IBM owned any patents relating to the tracking and tracing of people using RFID. Well, buckle up, because they do. On November 7, 2002, IBM was awarded with the United States patent number 2002-016-5758, namely, for the identification and tracking of persons using RFID tagged items. This patent includes 
a method and system for identifying and tracking persons using RFID tagged items carried on the person. Previous purchase records for each person who shops at a retail store are collected by POS terminals and stored in a transaction database. When a person carrying or wearing items having RFID tags enters the store or another designated area, an RFID tag scanner located therein scans the RFID tags on that person and reads the RFID tag information. The RFID tag information collected from the person is correlated with transaction records that are stored in the transaction database according to known correlation algorithms. Based on the results of the correlation, the exact identity of the person or certain characteristics about that person can be determined. This information is used to monitor the movement of the person through the store or other designated areas. With over 2,000 IBM employees dedicated to working on RFID technology, from portal readers to specific applications enabling the tracking of pharmaceutical drugs, food, vehicles, hospital patients, students, and offering financial solutions for a new financial order, one can see the aspirations of IBM to dominate every sector, including the obvious. IBM's aspirations for a smarter planet extend to aerospace and defense, automotive, banking, chemicals and petroleum, consumer products, the list goes on and on. IBM claims in the marketing literature relating to RFID that the planet will be interconnected, intelligent. People want it. We can do it. How will IBM's interconnection be achieved? As RFID techs communicate to RFID readers, the readers can in turn communicate and transmit data over telephone or by internet to computers. And of course, satellites. On December 15, 2004, Orbcom announced an application development agreement with Bearchip to be its provider of satellite and telecommunication services for applications to be developed for use with the implantable RFID Verichip. The Orbcom constellation consists of 29 low Earth orbiting communication satellites and focuses on M2M, Global Asset Monitoring and Messaging Services. M2M translates to mean machine to machine, man to machine, machine to man, machine to mobile, and mobile to machine communications. Under the terms of the agreement, Verichip and Orbcom will develop and market new military, security, and healthcare applications for use in the United States and around the world. Okay, we now have a patented human implantable microchip, a system that allows you to be tracked via satellite, RFID patents for tracking people, IBM controlling the census, financial transactions monitored and recorded. What else are we missing to put the web grid into place? Smart infrastructure, Example, RFID sensors and portal readers. How will this be done? By petitioning government, as this example in Australia shows, for IBM to include smart technology and infrastructure spending. IBM's Australian arm, Glenn Borham, stated that the Australian government should embed computer chips and wireless devices in the nation's infrastructure, and that this smart technology was a way of beating the global financial crisis. Mr. Borham says this plan can be implemented if the government works with businesses to create pilot projects in Australia where we can set up a town, we can set up a small community. He goes on to preach that putting smart devices into cars could solve a lot of traffic problems. If we were able to look at a network of understanding where cars were on a road, that, filtering into computers, could analyze data and do predictions. So that they could say, well, if there's a breakdown here, it will have this sort of flow and effect. We could then actually get information to people in real time.